In our last lesson, we saw that the molecules that make up cells can be monomers or polymers. And in order to stay alive, sometimes you have to make monomers from polymers or make polymers from monomers. So if you want to make a polymer, you would join two monomers together in dehydration synthesis. And if you wanted to make monomers, you would split them apart during hydrolysis to get your two monomers. But these reactions need help from molecules called enzymes. And without enzymes, these reactions would happen so slowly that you would be dead. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the structure and function of enzymes. The first thing to know about enzymes is that they are a type of protein, which means that they are made up of amino acids. And that's important because the sequence of the amino acids will determine their three-dimensional shape, like so. So because this particular enzyme has this particular order of amino acids, it folds up into a molecule with this shape. And that shape gives it its job. And each type of enzyme has a unique shape, and your body has hundreds of different types of enzymes. So now let's take a look at how enzymes do their job. Enzymes basically function as biological catalysts. What's a catalyst? Well, let's take a look at this graph to figure it out. On the x-axis, our independent variable is showing the progress of a chemical reaction from start to finish. And then on the y-axis, our dependent variable is the amount of energy that's being changed throughout the reaction. So let's compare a reaction with and without an enzyme. Here are the reactants, the starting materials. Here are the products, what forms at the end of the reaction. Here is a reaction without an enzyme. Here is a reaction with an enzyme. As you can see, there's a big difference in the amount of energy needed to get the reaction going. That energy is called the activation energy. All chemical reactions need a little boost to get them started. And the significant thing about enzymes is that if an enzyme is around, the reaction doesn't need as much activation energy, and thus it will happen faster. So the bottom line is that enzymes catalyze or speed up the rate of chemical reactions by lowering the activation energy needed to start the reaction. Let's take a look at an example of this. In this particular situation, we're going to see a hydrolysis chemical reaction. So here is our enzyme. And the enzyme's unique shape goes by the name of its active site. This particular enzyme is called sucrase. Enzymes tend to end in the suffix ASE, and they're often named for the molecule that they work with. So this enzyme, sucrase, works with the molecule sucrose. Sucrose is known as the substrate. Substrate is just a fancy word for the reactant molecule. Now notice what happens here. The substrate, sucrose, binds to the enzyme with a perfect fit. This is called an induced fit because initially the fit wasn't so perfect, but once it starts to bind, the enzyme changes, it, changes its shape just a little bit to fit perfectly. So once the enzyme has bound its substrate, it can now catalyze the reaction. In this case, water is going to be added, and we're going to split sucrase, or sorry, sucrose, up into two smaller molecules, glucose and fructose. So here are the products. Uh, and the important thing to note here is that the enzyme is unchanged by the reaction. Even though it helps the reaction happen, it doesn't actually get affected, which means that it can go off and repeat the reaction with a new substrate. It'll bind to it, catalyze the reaction, release the products, find a new substrate, bind to it, catalyze the reaction, release the products, find a new substrate. And that's very efficient for the body. Here's another example, this time a synthesis reaction. In this case, our enzyme is DNA polymerase, ACE because it's an enzyme, and polymerase because it's going to help build a DNA polymer. And our substrates this time are two small molecules, two nucleotides. So the two substrates bind to the enzyme with a nice perfect fit, and then the enzyme catalyzes the bonding of these two substrates. So then it releases its product. And the enzyme is unchanged, and it can go off and catalyze another chemical reaction. So let's sum up everything we've learned about enzymes. 
First of all, the reactant molecule that the enzyme acts on is the substrate. Here we've got our two substrates. The enzyme has an active site that is specific to its particular substrates. When the enzyme binds to its substrates, it's putting them in the best position for a reaction. If it weren't for this enzyme, these substrates might float around forever and ever and never come into contact and thus never form the product. But the enzyme makes sure that they get together quickly. After the reaction, the enzyme is unchanged, so it can be reused. And finally, enzymes can catalyze both hydrolysis and synthesis reactions.